Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's a brand new year. Does that mean it will bring a brand new me? The answer is nope. I find that anytime I'm trying to make changes in my life, I have the most success when those changes are thoughtful and gradual as opposed to dramatic and abrupt. After all, they do say slow and steady wins the race, and adagio seems to be my ideal pace. For anybody who doesn't speak Italian or who's not a musician, adagio is just the fancy pants exotic Italian way of saying slow. And in my line of work, I use that word to describe the tempo at which certain pieces of music should be played. But to be honest, I really feel like it's the perfect way to describe me as a human. So I'm not making any New Year's resolutions this year, and I also don't have any grandiose plans to reinvent myself, although this hairdo does kind of suggest otherwise. But I will be working on several projects, and I have a couple of what I consider realistic goals for myself this year, and so I thought I would share some of them in this video so that you know what to expect on my corner of the interwebs this year, but also I thought maybe, perhaps, it might even offer you a little bit of inspiration for your own journey. The new year is starting strong and I'm already in a rush today. As you can see, I'm still on the road. Just in case you're new here, I don't typically film in a closet, but this was the only acoustically sound space that I managed to find at my current location. So I'm making do with what I have, which is kind of one of the running themes of my channel. So welcome to the chaos. As you can see, I already have my stage hair in and that's normally a sign that I have to run. So if you see me looking at my notes more than normal, it's just because I have a lot planned this year and I don't want to forget any of it. I just completed what I was calling a style related low buy year or what many people would call a replacements only no buy year because I didn't purchase any makeup, skincare, hair care, clothing, or accessories for the entire year with only a few predefined exceptions. And this past year has taught me so many things that I could probably make a whole video about it. But today I just wanted to briefly touch on the fact that my no buy year in combination with my project pans and my closet declutters has taught me so many things and opened my eyes about my own preferences, behaviors, and habits. Because those things that I learned are going to be influencing my goals going forward. For example, I became aware of the fact that I am the type of person who pretty much wears makeup every single day. But although I wear it often, I don't tend to wear large amounts of makeup. My current style, at least at the moment, tends to involve wearing very light washes of color and a very light foundation application. So it takes me a very long time to use up my cosmetics. When it comes to powder products, that's not so much of an issue, simply because based on my experience, those things seem to last almost forever. But that's also, I think, because I'm doing things like regularly cleaning my brushes, regularly disinfecting my powder products, and also storing them in a cool, dry, controlled environment. Cream and liquid products, on the other hand, are trickier and they do tend to expire at a much faster rate. I am the kind of person I view expiration periods as rough estimates because they are relatively arbitrary and they depend on several different factors. But I also feel like I notice when things are starting to go off, especially things like concealers, foundations, cream cheeks, and lipstick, whether it be the smell, the consistency, um, if products are beginning to separate, or perhaps the longevity has changed. Uh, but in the worst case scenario, if a product is beginning to go off, sometimes it can have an adverse effect on my skin. So one of my main goals this year is to do a deep dive, year long, thorough putter declutter. And I would like the end result in December to be an elegantly edited, carefully curated collection of makeup items that I truly love using. And another one of the factors that I wanna keep in mind is that I only have one face and can only apply so much makeup to that one face in a given period of time. And I wanna make sure that I am able to enjoy each individual item that I keep, and that's going to limit the amount of makeup that I have. I definitely don't think that I will have a minimalist collection because I do enjoy rotating through things regularly, but it is going to shrink my collection dramatically, and I think I'm kind of looking forward to that. I think a good place to start will be to intensively test all of my cream and liquid products so that I can only keep the absolute jewels and gems of my kit. 
In my community tab, I asked you if you wanted to just see the declutter or if you would like to actually see the testing and comparison process behind the scenes. And so many of you said yes, that I will definitely be documenting the entire process, including direct comparisons and swatching and reviews. So if that sort of thing sounds interesting to you, make sure you've subscribed and have those notifications turned on so that you can watch my slow motion declutter in real time. Speaking of a slow declutter process, another thing this past year has taught me is that I tend to be happiest with slow decisions or decisions I gave myself sufficient time to make. When I look at all of the things that I purchased myself that I decluttered over the past year, or the things that I enjoyed using most, I've come to realize that the very well-considered items were the ones that I tended to be happiest with. There were a couple of exceptions to the rule. There were a couple of impulse buy gems that I had, but they were in the minority by far. And so, that teaches me that this coming year, one of my goals should be to avoid impulse purchasing if possible, because I am no longer in a low buy. I can buy whatever I want, whenever I want, as long as I can afford it. But I think maybe after a year of buying nothing that my muscles are strong enough to avoid impulse buying entirely. We'll see how that goes. But I think if I can avoid it entirely, that's gonna do two things for me. One, I'm going to be happier with any potential purchases I do make this year. But two, I am always going to give myself time to observe the context into which I will be bringing those items. And that is a year long declutter. The less I have, the less stuff I have, the easier it will be to do a declutter. And if that's always in the back of my mind when I'm making a purchasing decision, I think I'm ultimately going to purchase less, which is great. To help me align any potential purchases with my goals for the year, I've come up with several targets that I'd like to achieve. For example, when it comes to makeup, I have three main goals. And now I'm going to rely heavily on my notes. The first one is I want to improve the appearance of my complexion. Over the past 18 months, my skin has been going through some really dramatic changes, and some of it's just due to age, but some of it's also health-related changes. And so there are several things that I would like to improve makeup-wise when it comes to my complexion. But the most problematic area right now remains my under eyes. And so this year, I would like to discover the ideal application techniques, skincare, and makeup products for my under eyes at this stage of my life. Notice that I mentioned application technique before skincare and before cosmetics. I think in the past, I often assumed that a brand new shiny different product would solve a certain problem. And to be fair, that is sometimes the case. But over the past year, I was forced to use only what I had. And it taught me that I often underestimate just how much my application technique affects a product's performance. So although there is one concealer I am currently considering perhaps purchasing this year because it does tick all the boxes, I don't want to go out and just buy all the concealers. I want to mainly focus on what I already have. And if I do choose to purchase anything new, I don't want to simply automatically accept it as mine. I'm going to be putting it through an audition process where it will be performing in direct comparison with something similar that I might already have in my collection. And I want to see how it performs to together with the other items in my kit. If I'm happy with its performance, both within the context of my preferences and my entire makeup collection, then, and only then, can it become a permanent member of the band. And I plan to do the same for my foundations and my primers. I think having this set of priorities, technique first, products later, and prioritizing skincare before cosmetics will really help me limit any intake and help me edit my collection down to only my favorite things. My second makeup goal for the year is related to eyeshadow palettes. My low buy year taught me that if I had a habit of overpurchasing anything, it was definitely eyeshadow palettes. Now, as a lover of makeup, and especially of eyeshadow, I don't mind owning more eyeshadow than I need. But this past year has really solidified my belief that for me, everything is best in moderation, even excess. So in December, I went through all of my eyeshadows and took all of my least used palettes from last year and put them into a separate box. And I know they were my least used because every time I used an eyeshadow palette, 
I wrote it down. So this year, I'm going to focus on using last year's least loved palettes to see if I genuinely want to keep them or if there might have been a reason I wasn't reaching for them. And if that is the case, then I should give them away because they would probably be more appreciated in a different home. So until I can go through every single item in that box and make a final decision as to whether I want to keep or declutter each palette, I am not allowed to buy another eyeshadow palette. My third makeup goal is something I already touched upon, and that is that I want to thoroughly test all of my cream and liquid products to ensure that I only keep the absolute jewels and gems of my collection, the things that work best for my skin and my preferences. And that means that I will be thoroughly testing my cream cheek products and my lipsticks. And when it comes to those two categories of cream cheeks and lips, I also want to make sure that I make a final decision about whether I want to keep or declutter any items in those two categories before I even consider purchasing something new. My question to you is, do you have any goals this year? Maybe some makeup goals, a low buy, a no buy, maybe some panning goals, or are you on the quest to find the ideal color or texture or formula? If so, I would love to hear about your goals in the comments. I also have several other related goals when it comes to things like my wardrobe, hair, fragrance, and some very style adjacent lifestyle goals. And I thought about including those in this video, but I just wasn't sure if you'd be interested. So if that's something you'd like to hear more about, please let me know in the comments because I'd be so happy to make a video about that. It's always fun to have a little community to talk about those sorts of things with too, but I wanna make sure that I'm also making content that interests both of us and not just me. If you're like me and you're watching YouTube to veg out and like leaving a comments just like a bit much, but you still want to hear about those goals, let me know by just leaving me a flower emoji. That'll be enough. And then I'll share my other style goals too. As for those of you who have been asking me about when my next 22 and 22 project pan update is coming, it is on the way. I've already started work on it. It's just very difficult for me to find time to do anything when I'm on the road, especially things like filming and editing. And those videos in particular are very time intensive to edit, but I'm chipping away at it whenever I have a free moment. So it is definitely on the way. And it has to be because once that finale is done, Done, oh my gosh, wait till you see the new project for this year because it's like the new improved version of 22 and 22. It's going to be sleek and sexy and so much fun. So stay tuned for that. But back to this video, to sum things up, my overarching goal for this year is to begin creating an elegantly edited, creatively and carefully curated life by starting small with my makeup kit. And that means I will be puttering through a year long declutter. I will be testing and comparing makeup, doing project pans, and being very careful to consider exactly what I choose to bring into my collection. I want to place my first priority on techniques and optimizing what I have, and only purchase things when I can't achieve my goals through technique alone. I think some people would call this approach slow beauty, simply because it involves taking the time to really delve into makeup, to learn about it, to enjoy it, to revel in it. And at the same time, it provides relatively organic boundaries for purchasing. But because I'm a fancy pants musician, I think of it as adagio beauty because it's just such a more exotic way of saying slow. <laughs> and I'm all about exotic elegance and creative curation this year. And I'm really looking forward to enjoying my makeup at my very own adagio tempo. So this little corner of the interwebs will be the place to find adagio beauty content this year. And although this particular video is coming to a close, I do have another slow beauty video for you right Right here. I hope that you will like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz, but even if you don't, I wish you a happy new year and hope that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.